Went to Disney for the first time. A trip to Disney. That was, uh, that was rough. That was rough. That is not a good place. They call it the happiest place on earth. For who? For who? Oh, look, I love the idea. I love the idea that this man created something out of his own head. He just wanted to create a nice little place where families can go and kids can let their imagination run wild and feel safe for a couple hours in this horrible world. <laughs> Beautiful idea. But what he couldn't foresee when he was developing it in 1950 was the type of people it was going to attract <laughs> in 2016 in the United States of America. Because they didn't make these kind of people back then. There weren't dinosaur-sized people stomping through the park with their elephant children attached to their tail. <laughs> Pushing the biggest strollers I've ever seen. I had no idea John Deere made strollers. <laughs> One woman had five kids in it. I, I, I never, I don't know what you even call that. A pentalometer, a jumbotron, five pumpkin-faced kids eating cheeseburgers, and she's plowing through the crowd, knocking other families out of the way like tumbleweeds, just so she can get to the churro stand first. <laughs> then there are people there, women who have no children at all, who want to be a princess themselves. <laughs> Grown women who want to be a princess. They want to dress like Cinderella, but they don't make a Cinderella dress. For someone 48 years old, 65380. <laughs> they never had a meeting and said, let's make more of those. <laughs> does that stop them? No, it does not. They buy that dress, they stuff everything they have into it, and a lot doesn't fit. There's a lot of extra hanging over the sides. But that's okay. They're happy there. They have their autograph book and their wand, and they skip through the park. Fine. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think I was going to fall for it. I didn't. I didn't think we were going to go. I didn't. But once you make your own people, the ads just find you. Every time you open your phone, open your laptop, turn on TV, there they are, just selling you joy and perfection, right? Every time you turn it on, the mom and dad are beautiful, perfect teeth and hair, clothes. I love you. No, I love you. You're beautiful. No, you're beautiful. Our kids are beautiful. And the kids are holding Mickey's hand, looking back at the parents. Thanks, mom and dad, for not being stupid and poor. <laughs> I'll admit it, I wanted to be that family. I wanted to be that family. We were not that family. We didn't come close. We were not perfect. We were sweaty and pissed off and cursing in front of the children. This is your damn fault. If your parents didn't raise you like an animal, we would have left it a little bit earlier. And the kids don't even hear us because they're slapping each other in the face. And we haven't even parked yet. We haven't even parked. We're still in the van. We're pissed off because we didn't get to park in Mickey and Minnie parking. They sent us with that big hand to the ass end of Chippendale parking. <laughs> That's another tram ride we didn't plan for. Then you get to the front of the park. I know it's a cliche, but you get up there, you open your wallet, they take everything you got. <laughs> everything, every dollar, every coin, every credit card, gym memberships, pictures of your family, unused condoms. That mouse rapes you at the turnstile. <laughs> And you have to plaster a smile on your face in front of your kids because you don't want to ruin the happiest place on earth. It's going to be a great day, guys. It's really going to be a lot of fun. Then you get inside, it's just line after line after line. I thought I was going to beat it. I had the app on my phone. I'm like, I'm going to beat them. No, you're not beating Disney. I'm like, let's go on the Peter Pan ride. That's a horrible ride from 1912. Look, no one wants to even go on it. The line only goes back and forth two times. Yeah, up here. Then they take you to the basement. It loops around for three days. Then you shoot you out the ass and it goes around the Matterhorn 12 times. And it's a bad ride. It's a bad ride. Old cardboard cutouts, Christmas lights that don't even work anymore. All the voices are jumbled. I'm Tinkerbell. I'm Tinkerbell. Two and a half hours. Was it worth it? No. What would be worth it? Nothing. I get to the end of that line, there could be naked supermodels with bags of money and all you could eat nachos. I'd be like, no, not into it. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> I only shop at Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. That's where I get my conflict-free M&Ms. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> I'm done with the Whole Foods. I'm done with it. I like eating healthy. I do. We have to be a billionaire to eat healthy. I'm not spending five bucks an apple because you thought it was a good idea to ship it from Vermont by bicycle. <laughs> then where are you going to get your kale? How are you going to get your kale? I don't know. I don't care. I don't even know what it is. My grandmother never made it. My mother never saw it. It just showed up like a week and a half ago. But it's here now, and you got to eat it. Well, how do I know what it is? Because it tastes like mulch, and you feel like a koala bear when you're chewing on it. Are you supposed to eat the stem? Oh, okay. Hard to tell the eat part from the throw out part. They get up to the register, they put on a whole show about their bags. I have my own bags. I want everyone here to know I wouldn't use their bags. I am an angel sent from heaven. I wove my own bags out of human hair and seaweed. Get over yourself. These people have driven me to Costco. That's the only place I shop now. I go to Costco. Yeah. Yeah. No one acts like they're better than you at Costco. Everyone knows exactly who they are at Costco. <laughs> I'm disgusting and I need more stuff immediately. <laughs> and I'm making one trip, I brought the big car. This is my only weekend out. <laughs> There's a sense of community when you go to Costco, right? You, can, you can't go there by yourself. You can drive there alone. You're gonna have to make some friends on your way in. You can't get a 25 pound salami on your back by yourself. <laughs> trying to throw it in your cart like the Scottish strongman competition. Place is so massive, they gotta hand out little samples and cups to keep up your strength. It's like a white trash marathon in that place. Here's a fried bologna bowl, you're doing great. There's fried chicken popsicles aisle 10, you get there by Tuesday if you keep up the pace. You get to the register, no one's talking about bags at Costco. They even have bags. They have boxes with holes in it. There was a dead pig in this yesterday. I don't know if that bothers you. The cardboard's a little wet. He was a bleeder. And they know they're not gonna live forever at Costco. They have coffins at the door. They literally sell coffins at the door, which sounds absurd until you look in your cart filled with Cheez-Its and Slim Jims. You're like, how much longer can I live like this? Seriously. You know what? Today's the day. I'm buying a coffin today. You know what? Give me the coffin. I'm going to use it as my box. Put all my stuff in there. Really? 